Good morning. Bom dia. Buenos dias. Good afternoon. Boa tarde. This depends on uh, your country. We will start our webinar. I will open the webinar and present the webinar. And after that, I will give the floor to Oscar Dominguez. I would like to greet you all to this uh, ninth webinar of the series of the Global In Focus 2021. This is one of the last events of this series, and I will explain uh, the reason why. I'm talking about one of the last webinars. Uh, we all have learned in these months how to use Zoom. The chat is only for the panelists to exchange ideas among them. All the participants can ask questions uh, using the Q&A icon. Elizabeth Colucci will be monitor monitoring all these questions and comments. And if there are many, she will be summarizing them. And she will be providing support to Oscar Dominguez, who will be facilitating today's webinar. In these webinars of Overall Global in Focus 2021, we have over 2,000 participants, and we have around 2,500 who register. And it's not bad for the first year, but we hope that we have more participants in the future. We need to announce that we will have the series of the Global In Focus 2022 next year. The webinars uh, will be recorded and they will be available at the overall web website in a short time. And the team uh, coordinated by Mr. Exposito is taking uh, uh, all the measures in order to uh, upload the webinars to the website. The goal of the webinars was to uh, start the South South North cooperation regarding higher education and related areas. And this is a dialogue that Obreal wants to have with all its members. We needed to have the different chapters of over the global for this discussion. We have three chapters in Latin America and the Caribbean, South America, Caribbean, and Central America. And we have also the chapter for India. I will talk about it later. And we are also having new chapters for Africa and Europe. They are not consolidated yet. First, I would like to thank the chairs of these chapters for their work and for the efforts that they have made in order to put these chapters in motion. To show this, today's webinar will be coordinated by Oscar Dominguez. He's executive secretary of the Colombian Uni Association of Universities, ASCUN, and he has been leading all the work done by the South, South American chapter. Today's webinar has to do with digitalization and internationalization of higher education. This is a theme for which Obreal Global has its own approach. We have discussed this internally. Our approach considers that the COVID-19 pandemic is not just a parenthesis but should be a way to foster digitalization and blended learning in the future. 
internationalization and blended learning will be here are here to stay and since the physical walls of our borders and our classrooms are no longer there uh, we have a more open space for professors and for students uh, professors are not the only ones who have the monopoly and students can uh, go to anybody to have access to knowledge. And we need to include this in our daily practice and also in the working or the functioning of universities. I, been, I had four comments for the beginning, so I, and I have covered all of them. So now I would like to insist on the fact that this is the ninth webinar, but it's not the last event of overall in Global in Focus, because our last event will be the international conference in India organized by one of our members, one of the members of overall Global, that is Symbiosis International University. Uh, with Dr. Vidria, Brendikap, and we need to acknowledge him because he wanted his conference to be the closure of Obrao's focus. And also within this conference, we will have the assembly of Obra Global. Oscar would allow me to acknowledge him for having led and organized today's webinar. He will also agree with me that I should also acknowledge Dr. Vidya because he did a lot to organize the series of webinars. So now I will conclude my short presentation. So dear Oscar, you're in church now. I will disappear from the screen. Elizabeth Colucci will be monit monitoring the Q&A icon, and I will be back for the closure. Oscar, you are in charge of this event. Thank you. Ramon, thank you. Thank you. To all of those who are here today with us, also I would like to thank you all those members from ASCUN. Uh, we work together with OGM. I would like to greet all the members of the South American chapter. Thank you for all those who help us organize this webinar, Nicolás, Elizabeth, and all the team of, of Real who are always ready and they show that we have a great team. I would like to start by talking about the past. And I would like to tell all of you, all those who are there participating in this webinar, we will have a panel of experts today. We will continue reflecting upon education today. And I would like to talk a little about our South American chapter. Uh, in Ascun, we have over 33 years of history in Colombia. And we have witnessed collaborative work in uh, between our institutions in order to cover the regional and national needs. And we have created therefore collaboration spaces uh, to have this South House cooperation, uh, North cooperation as Ramon was saying. And there are some antecedents in which Obrel has been a good excuse to conduct our work. 
we have the Proyecto Alfa Puentes is one of the antecedents. It helped us to know each other, to work together, to collaborate, and all the projects within Alfa Puente have helped us foster our initiatives in higher education. Recently, we have Ulises, Caminos, and Mimira, and you know, those projects have contributed to the South American channel. We have new tools of collaboration now, and many higher education institutions have been using these concepts, these tools, these narratives in their work. Uh, we have a new approach now in our South American chapter after the global meeting in 2020 and our work in 2019, in the assembly, we decided that we want to consolidate our South American chapter. And we defined then the steps to be taken in recent months. I don't know who is speaking, please mute yourselves. So what we want to do is to consolidate our chapter in the middle of circumstances that we all know about. The, when we did the Ulises project or the Caminos project, or when we coordinated the Mirandino project, we didn't imagine them what would happen later and that we will be working in the middle of a pandemic. That is a situation without uh, any precedents. Uh, we are now in a situation in South America, we couldn't believe this was going to be possible. A month ago when we were planning the agenda, we couldn't imagine the situation that some countries like Chile and Mexico will be going through. And also we have a very complex situation in Brazil. Uh, many of the colleagues here know what we are talking about and the complexities that these new re realities create. So this uh, webinar on digitalization and the South American chapter this has a, it's a twofold approach. On the one side, we would like to talk about how the South American chapter uh, advanced. We did some work with focus groups in order to cover these topics of inter internationalization. And therefore, I would like to introduce Julio Taylor, professor from the Universidad Nacional del Litoral, He's the director of the Language Center of the Universidad Nacional del Literal. And he also coordinates uh, one of the research institutes on higher education of Argentina. And he will be presenting the results of the focus groups in Argentina. We carried out this work in five countries, Argentina, Argentina Chile, Brazil, Uruguay, and Colombia. And this will us have some background information for today's panel and we will find new approaches and we will be able to recognize our work in the projects that are being conducted and we will see the perspectives of all the actors that participated in the focus groups julio now you have the floor i would like you to summarize the work that the south american chapter has been conducting. You have the floor, Julio, and thank you, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to present today. I would like to present the work that we did as part of the South American chapter of Obra Global. And as Oscar was saying, 
in January and in February 2021, we carried out this project. Basically, the idea is to conduct several focus groups that promote dialogue regarding digitalization of the academic offering in our region. And we also would like to cover the internationalization of the curricula. We conducted uh, focus groups in four regions of South America. Uh, we have uh, some focus groups in Chile, others in Brazil, others in Colombia and Peru. Uh, we had experts from both countries there. And then we have another fo other focus groups in Argentina and Uruguay. The goal was to uh, summon experts uh, on internationalization and academic management in order to reflect upon these topics. And the result was to draw some conclusions to promote training in digitalization of academic offering and the internationalization of the curricula. We had a script, we had a single work scheme in order to be able to compare the results uh, from the different countries and to draw general conclusions for the South American region. And we hope that we achieve our goal. And I have tried to summarize those results in this presentation. Uh, regarding globalization and digitalization of the academic offering, the conclusions are the following. Most of the participants confirm digitalization or a, an almost complete digitalization of the academic offering of their universities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, they acknowledge that there are some courses or disciplines that have issues uh, to go into full digitalization, especially when you need have a practice a part. And they have universities postpone those practices uh, for in order to be able to conduct them on sand on site, and they have conducted those practices towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year. Uh, the pandemic created a quick reaction, but the reaction to the pandemic was not homogeneous among universities, but it consolidated over time. And we have an additional result Virtuality has been considered now a pedagogical tool, a first class for universities and education. Many universities had previous experiences. They work with uh, virtual education institutes and this helped them to adapt. But also, Virtual socialization uh, has shown the difficulties that exist to adapt to the new model. And we see that many professors have uh, educational training limitations. And this has challenged the maintenance of the process quality. And that is all other of the conclusions of these focus groups. We also identified a serious situation because there is new inequalities. Uh, the South American region already has several inequalities and regarding access to virtual education, we see that many have difficulties to have access to virtual education due to social or geographical reasons. It is true that 
the economic demand uh, has not been a serious problem because virtuality is not that expensive and universities have been able to promote partnerships with national and local governments and also with the private sector in order to facilitate digitalization of education, especially the higher education sector. There have been differences among the different departments in the adaptation to virtual education, and in a way there have been more difficulties in human and social sciences, mostly due to the fact that the faculty in general were less technology oriented in a way. Another difficulty that we found was among the students. Many students having lost this natural activity of uh, getting together and now having to study alone at home have faced certain difficulties to concentrate and uh, uh, they lacked autonomy because of this radical change in the way they were studying as a result of the pandemic. Finally, when it comes to digitalization, there has been no consensus uh, among the participants of the focus groups uh, regarding the future of virtual education once uh, the pandemic is over. We, of course, hope that this will be soon. There is a group of people who believe that the seed has already been planted and therefore virtual settings in a way have uh, arrived and are here to stay and will become an intensive tool in the future in the context of higher education. Other experts consider that this is not the case and that uh, there is a use of online uh, education as an emergency measure. And once the pandemic is over, uh, that in most cases, in their opinion, education will resume its normal course. I think there is a clear uh, scenario here, and we've heard so much about uh, the future, as a, and it's the fact that there is a possibility of a hybrid mixed form of education where virtual uh, education is a part but is not the single method used in the future. When we think about globalization and digitalization of academic offer from the perspective of internationalization, experts who participated in these focus groups agreed that the offering of uh, virtual education has opened up a very interesting scenario for internationalization of uh, curricula. It is not fully clear how this will uh, take place, but virtual education has uh, destroyed distances and has made the possibility of interacting much more affordable. And therefore, this constitutes a major opportunity for internationalization. On the other hand, virtual exchange has uh, slowly been established in our region. Of course, this means that a student is attending courses at a foreign university, but from their homes. There are clear examples of the quick reaction that universities have had, as well as councils and university networks in our region uh, to replace, in a way, the mobi traditional mobility, physical mobility of students to their houses of study by with this modality that was triggered by the pandemic, but many people believe, including myself, that this is here to stay. The program called Pila Virtual, the program of the Ibero and Inter-American University System, et cetera. These are actions and networks, such as the Grupo Montevideo. They are all experiences that are very interesting and which have proven successful among students. 
the deficits in the mastering of foreign languages. This is one of the major problems that appeared during the focus groups uh, and a challenge for internationalization. This could limit the offering of uh, courses and of course could hinder interaction of our Latin American region with other regions in the world where Spanish and Portuguese may not be enough for this interaction. These are the basic conclusions of uh, the issue of globalization and digitalization. The other half of the focus groups that we organized specifically uh, focused on the internationalization of the curricula. And the conclusions were the following. In general, the concept of internationalization of the curriculum is re relevant for the institution and is included within strategic plans. However, the concept was not homogeneous among the different countries. However, this was referred to by the majority. This relevance that uh, is referred to formally is not really what we observe on a daily basis in universities where there is an important lack of knowledge by the stakeholders within the university sector on the internationalization of the curriculum, both at an institutional level and also at the level of the individuals and the uh, faculty. The faculty is usually familiar with the concept of traditional student mobilization. They actually participate in that mobilization. They promote uh, their they, and encourage their students to do a semester abroad, but they do not promote internationalization in general. Uh, of course, there is a significant number of exceptions in every case. This uh, has been helpful because in our institutions, there is no academic recognition, both at the national university system and at the level of the evaluations conducted, but also not at the level of the universities themselves. And in general, there aren't economic incentives and uh, they are always welcome, of course. Uh, because of the meager salaries that uh, the faculty perceives. When it comes to higher education institutions, they are not proactive in promoting the internationalization of their uh, curriculums. And when it comes to designing the curriculums, uh, they have not been designed by including an international vision when they are designed for the students. And we believe it is extremely necessary to innovate uh, in this aspect. In a way, uh, the curriculums are not flexible to be able to include the initiatives of internationalization in a formal manner. Therefore, the developed experiences respond mostly to individual initiatives and not to curriculum-based strategies when consulted during the focus groups, when consulted about concrete examples of internationalization of study plans, they mostly refer to the double titles or double degrees. The double degrees which exist in many universities, these agreements of dual or double degrees, many of them with Europe and the United States and to a lesser extent within the region. The examples of double degree at an internal level within Latin America are few and far between, unfortunately. Also, when it comes to teaching a foreign language, there were a few examples associated to uh, experiences of internationalization, such as COIL and others. There is a general agreement uh, at these focus groups that not all disciplines uh, are prone to internationalization actions in their subjects. For example, we can name science, engineers, foreign trade as an example 
uh, and also social sciences, on the other hand, uh, featured many interesting comments and they were not very prone because of the idea of the colonization of the curriculum. There is general agreement that in terms of moving forward with the internationalization of the curriculum and the strategies, uh, the focus areas should be coordination and academic management as the engine of this uh, incorporation. As priority regions, there was always a mention of having a Latin American focus at the institutions and secondly, Europe. However, this institutional spirit as they mentioned, when it comes to actually reaching the faculty, there is a more a higher preference to orient these activities more towards Europe and the United States. So I believe it's very important uh, to strengthen the possibility of uh, looking at the areas where those uh, teachers and professors obtain their training. One of the major limiting factors is the lack of mastering of the foreign language. University networks must play a major role in the internationalization of the curriculum. We are a very proactive region and we are a set of universities within a region that promotes the development of networks. However, these networks have not moved forward in developing strategies to bring the universities closer, thus promoting the internationalization of the curriculum. The budget support, everyone agrees that it's very low. As a conclusion, we need to work on raising awareness on the importance of uh, curriculum internationalization within the academic sector and organize trainings on innovating uh, teaching methodologies and strengthen the skills in a foreign language within the academic community. Finally, when it comes to uh, guiding and channeling these activities of awareness and training, we identified the following items. Within the community, uh, there must be a strong promotion of collaborative work multicultural competencies and also integrated communication skills, which includes the mother tongue of those uh, people. Who uh, to target when developing these awareness actions? We thought of the key stakeholders, of course, academic secretaries. This is not called the same way uh, everywhere. Um, we have the director of the courses of the different schools and also the members of governing bodies. This will all uh, promote a systemic approach to internationalization and not just responding to uh, an initiative developed by a specific group of professors. Of course, the internationalization of the curriculum must observe the objectives of all the institutions, their history and the local context as well. In terms of the main training lines that have been identified, sorry. We identified awareness on the uh, value of uh, internationalization, strategies to redesign and flexibilize the educational models uh, flexible programs is very important to internationalize a curriculum. The promotion of a curricular model based on competencies, pedagogical tools for international education, the promotion of internationalization through uh, networking, and the promotion of uh, the learning and utilization of foreign languages. I believe that these are the conclusions in a way I think I stayed within my time and uh, this was a result of the focus group which we very happily conducted and not just that but also exchanged the information with other regions. Thank you very much. 
Julio, thank you so much. You have presented the results in much detail, and I think that there are two specific questions, Julio. When thinking about uh, from an optimistic perspective or a pessimistic perspective, in your experience, uh, analyzing this information, would it be possible to think that although when internationalizing a curriculum, there, there are things that we need to deal with on an ongoing basis. And during COVID, we have been able to see that this is possible. So how do we see this vis-a-vis -vis transnational education and the possibilities of Latin America and South America specifically with all of these uh, transnational approaches. What can you say about South America institutions? Are they trying to work towards internationalization and do they face any challenges? And secondly, how do you think this will contribute to uh, universities continuing to be the ultimate goal of young Latin Americans. But I think that with your experience, I think it's not easy to answer these questions, but I would like to hear your opinion. Thank you. I think that transnational education has a certain charm in a way for students who see the possibility of maybe uh, accessing international studies. I think the internationalization of the curriculum it represents a great possibility for our universities to show their students that in their own country with their own institutions and their own idiosyncrasy, they can access studies that will incorporate that international dimension, but which is coordinated from the perspective of their own knowledge. In my opinion, this reflects the interest that students have shown to access international studies in a different region. Well, I believe that that mobility to actually go to those places is very elitist. And I think that with the internationalization of the curriculums and including, for example, teachers from other countries in their own programs or interacting with students from other countries always thinking about a virtual approach and practically with no cost, I think we have reached one, we can reach 100% of the students of our university. So in my opinion, that is the great benefit that internationalization has in this virtual setting. And we also see there a major opportunity to cooperate with the university of our own region, thus creating value for South America and uh, not just uh, give beautiful speeches that never translate into actions. And this can be done through the different networks. I don't think I've answered everything, but that's uh, my view. Thank you, Julio. And along these uh, lines, I will now introduce our the rest of our panelists. Um, I will introduce Maria Leonor Alves. She is the president of the Brazilian Association for International Education, FAUB. I is the president of the Brazilian Association for International Education, full professor in the Department of Civil Engineer at the Federal University of Pernambuco. Welcome, Maria Leonor. I will quickly introduce Clayona Maher, Latin America Strategy Officer and Vice Chair of the Latin America Regional Working Group, UCC in Ireland. Clayona has worked on international cooperation and educational and cultural cooperation for Universidad Veracruzana for 20 years years in Mexico. Armida de la Garza is a senior lecturer at the National University of Ireland Cork, where she is also part of the internationalization team. During 2016 and 2019, she was the director of internationalization strategy for the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences at that university. I would also like to welcome Monica Marquina. 
Monica holds a BA in Education Sciences from UBA, from University of Buenos Aires, and a Master's in Higher Education Administration from Boston College. She is also a PhD in Higher Education from the University of Palermo and an independent researcher at CONICET. And among all these women, I will introduce the only man in this panel, Jose Basarine. He is a professor and he is the director of the Department of Social Sciences of the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine at the Universidad de la República in Uruguay. He worked for nine years in the higher education area of the Ministry of Education and Culture of this country. So with these deluxe panelists, I would like to officially kick off um, this panel with certain rules. Uh, I will ask a general question. And, uh, I ask you to stay within the uh, specified time. But what I will do is ask the questions and answer them all at the end so that we can uh, respond to them. Um, I will ask the question that has been predefined, and it's the following. Digitalization is an indispensable tool to promote the flexibilization of learning and the modularization of the curricula. How is this impact, this accelerated impact during 2020, affected processes of internationalization in your countries and regions of influence? Maybe we can begin uh, with uh, maybe I will switch uh, the order and I will ask Jose to start his intervention. Five minutes, please. And so on. Thank you. Good morning. In this area of the world and good afternoon for those who are in Europe. I would like to thank you, Obriel, for their invitation for giving me the opportunity to participate in this panel. One of the most important things that we need to take into consideration are the changes in education. Up to 2019, changes were just voluntary, and those changes promoted internationalization. Uh, but uh, because of on-site education in our curricula, those changes were only an exception. Digitalization and virtualization in curricula were the result of an emergency and we need to rethink. And internationalization benefit, benefited from a change that was not aimed at internationalization. The goal was for people not to move uh, and for professors and students to continue education. And what are the results of that? Luckily, students or most of the students could uh, dominate the technology and the use technology as a support for on-site education. And in the case of professors, they could adapt to the change rapidly. If we try to see the situation from a global perspective, institutions did not stop. They have to rethink and to re-adapt, uh, but education continued to be there and it worked well. Julio already said that, that most of the disciplines went uh, online and went by uh, virtual. Uh, taking into consideration the efforts that were already there and the new efforts, the tools used were similar. And that also helped because when you invite somebody to join a remote education platform, uh, the learning experience could be a trauma. And sometimes using very different platforms uh, requires learning from zero. But most of the platforms were uh, similar. 
you have five, six uh, platforms across the region, but most of them have the similar features. So for example, if you have a platform in Brazil, another in Colombia, but students use in the end very similar platforms. And that is the challenge is to go beyond this year, how we keep our goal of uh, using our education tools to promote internationalization when we go back to normal. In the incorporation of internationalization has been bigger because prof professors have now new opportunities. So now what we need to incorporate at the management level of institutions is uh, we need those institutions to think how they can incorporate new technologies so that students from abroad can be part of their classes. And for that, professors need to incorporate technology and the benefits of technology more quickly. And the tools that are at our disposal have improved their features. They are more intuitive. They included new features. They have solved those aspects related, for example, to group experiences. They have simulators. And there were things that at the very beginning could not be virtual, but now they are virtual. And there are new ways of incorporating the practice in groups or in more intensive way. And when we had to think protocols to have a lot of students doing the practices at the same time, was difficult, but we now have a new type of internationalization. We have short-term practices. And for example, those opportunities are now available for those students abroad because they can do most of the course online and they have the on-site practices that are for a short period of time. And what, what we see is that there are some things that will stay and other things that will be that will change. And we need to assess quickly the scenario. And depending on the discipline, we can need to help uh, professors so that the digitalization is there. We need to understand the changes in teaching and the we need for those changes to be kept so that virtualization is still an opportunity when we go we go back to the to normal let's say thank you jose for your perspective from uruguay now i would like to give the floor to maria leonora so he maria leonor so she gives us her perspective regarding these digitalization processes maria I, we would like to know the situation in Brazil. Good morning, everybody. We have different uh, times here. René is with me here, and we will be sharing yes. the challenges for 2020-2021. We see that there is a new scenario in international system. Julio mentioned very important points. I would like to congratulate Obrel's team because they prepare and they did a great research work regarding internationalization of higher education. I would like to talk about some aspects 
regarding digitalization. I, am con I have a concern that it's not about today. And that concern is what digitalization means, what uh, we uh, mean when we talk about digitalization. We have different uh, physical processes that went virtual, but what digitalization is, what we call digitalization, that is my concern. As a concept, concept. We, we need to understand that uh, there are some implications regarding how we address many of the results of the research done, because we see that digitalization sometimes is considered something temporary. But uh, after the pandemic, things will change. And we have data from uh, focus groups. And those results structure our perspective in a different way. And our challenge is to understand internationalization through new glasses, not the glasses of the past, of yesterday. We need to, we need to understand digitalization from a new perspective. The context has been very hard. We have a lot of negative aspects that need to be considered. And we need, have the opportunity to rethink internationalization through new glasses. Technology is a wave of connecting the dots, of establishing relationships. And this leads to new challenges. For example, a case that we have in Brazil, and we have also experiences with different associations. And I think that those uh, experiences could help us read of, read of it our learning experiences, and we need to stop fostering inequalities in education. We have a set of difficulties because some students do not have access to virtual activities and access to digital data sometimes is also limited. Uh, the training of professors and the administrative staff has to do with learning the new technologies. The digital divide needs to be addressed. And together with access inequalities, we have also challenges regarding the digitalization as a process that is not only temporary, we can also promote networking between universities to have multicultural spaces. And this is a great potential in the area of internationalization. We can have the internationalization of curricula. And this is a very promising thing. Uh, and this new stage of internationalization of education. And regarding the actions, uh, I would like to say that we have developed and we have invested in virtual exchanges experiences. One of the features of virtual, uh, one of the characteristics of virtual mobility is the following. In order to have international experiences, uh, or in order to understand these virtual experiences, we uh, have the possibility of offering our students to have a period of time abroad, but most of the students do not have that opportunity. So the virtual exchange 
uh, that we have through these new uh, ways of communicating uh, after training the professors is an institutional policy. This is not an individual or separate policy. We need to implement these spiritual exchanges as an institutional policy in order to provide this opportunity uh, for our students, in order to promote a multicultural setting in our institutions. So this is internationalization at home. Uh, those were the things that I would like to share with you today. And I think that we have a lot of potential and a lot of things to improve in this regard. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Lonor. Now I would like to give uh, the floor to Cleona Maher so she can share with us her experience in Mexico. Go ahead, Cleona. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to this panel. Yes. I think that one of the benefits of this online environment is the standardization of the use of platforms, Zoom, Teams, etc. We could include interesting aspects in the extracurricular activities in Cork Island. A few weeks ago, we have the Green Campus Week, and we included uh, colleagues from Colombia and Ecuador so they can share their experiences of, uh, of Green Campus. And we also have a week for refugees, and we invited an NGO from Honduras. Honduras. And this was, this was much easier. At the very, in the past, we couldn't afford these things because of the travel costs, etc. But now we have the seed and we have opened other doors in order to uh, internationalize the curricula. We hope that this continues. I don't know if my colleague would like to talk about this, Armida. Thank you, Cleona. Um, in the case of Irlanda, digitalization has had an impact on the flexibilization of learning. So we have an easier access to courses. During the pandemic, we re started to record all these sessions, so they are available for students. In the past, only on-site students uh, have access to those uh, lectures or courses. There were some restrictions at the beginning. For example, they have some doubts regarding copyright. Some professors were concerned regarding the impact on employment. Uh, especially if the university will have all the classes recorded. They were concerned about these uh, things. Before the pandemic, this was a barrier to virtual classes. The pandemic uh, left no other options. So we started recording classes and going virtual. We also try to incorporate virtual reality to our classes. We have online, cl online classes, but we try to make the most of virtual reality, especially in those disciplines that you have uh, a practical part. For example, everything that has to do with chemistry labs. At the beginning, we have doubts. We do not we didn't know that we could offer those modules because students wouldn't have access to the equipment to the machines but thanks to virtual reality they they could get familiar with equipment and one of the uh, the professors mentioned that one of the advantages is that um, physical equipment are expensive and they 
could uh, have uh, errors or they could break down when the students use them without knowing how to use them. So virtual reality has been very helpful. And now all the experiments are done virtually and our, this has been very good for students and for the practice part. And, and one of the difficult areas has been music because there is a lag uh because we need collaboration that is at the speed of sound and uh for our music professors it was very difficult to have uh performances in simul uh, simultaneous performances or that everything worked in harmony so it was but we were able to do it then and also we see that seminars and online seminars have been very good and they have had a great impact. So that could be the contributions by Ireland. Thank you, Armida. Thank you, Clonia. Cleona, for your perspectives. I like what you were saying, Armida. You make emphasis on the difficulties of the practical part in this virtual setting. I think that's very important. So. We have perspective of Mexico and also the perspective of Ireland. So now let's go to Argentina. I would like to give the floor to Monica Marquina. So he she shares her experiences. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this important event. Your question was about the impacts of digitalization and how we can promote flexibilization of curricula? I think this is a very complex question. The simple answer is that each institution did it as they could. And this was what happened at the very beginning. I think that the higher education sector did not suffer the consequences as the other levels of education, especially everything that it has to do with um, the first levels of education or rural education. But institutions reacted as they could and in each of the countries. And this also depends on how their virtual education systems were structured. And Julio already mentioned this and some of the panelists also mentioned this. There are differences between countries, between institutions. I'm really happy of the very good results that some of the institutions have had. But for most institutions, the impact was negative. We still need to assess how many students drop from school. We need to see what happened with those students that did not have access to virtual education. And by trying to answer the question is that the pandemic and internationalization arrived in the middle of the situation where the old, uh, the institutions have old and not updated institutional practices. And within this context, digitalization uh, copy these uh, problems or took these problems from the on-site setting to the virtual setting. In many cases, especially in those institution, institutions that do not have a, did not have a sound remote education system, on-site education practices moved to the digital setting. And therefore we have long Zoom sessions of two hours. And most of the people were with, that, with their cameras off, so you didn't know whether they were there or not. So I think that we need to learn a lot from this experience. And we 
see now that curricula are very strict or rigid. And we have, we, I can identify now some of the issues of the past, the lack of flexibility, the rigid curricula. So we need to make the most of this opportunity in order to relate these three things, internationalization, digitalization, and curricular flexibilization. If we can incorporate those three things, we will be able to make the most of this situation. We have to deal with it as we have been able to, and we could have a more international curricula, and this could be just another option among the other options of education within each system. So, but if we believe that going digital is to use new technologies and that's it, we will continue having rigid curricula, but with some technologies. So I think that this is a very good opportunity to understand the challenges for institutions, for professors, so that we can make the most of this reality. We weren't expecting it, but now, depending on the professors or the classrooms or the institutions, we need to understand how we can make the most of this. La pregunta bastante clara en, y de la calidad que, pero eso será en otro momento y para otro. I think the question has been made very, very clearly, and uh, I think that the panelists will probably have a lot to say about this. I would like to thank those of you who are asking questions on the Q&A function. We will have time to answer them at the end, so please continue to write them there. I will now propose um, a zoom in on, on the topics discussed. I will ask Jose and Maria Leonor to answer the following question. How can we favor the digitalization of processes to promote university internationalization and regionalization? Please, let's try to use just five minutes each so that in this sort of focus session, we can provide the more concrete information possible. Jose, uh, if you agree, we'll give the floor to Maria Leonor first. I will actually give the floor to Renee uh, because she is leading a regional initiative. And she will discuss this initiative. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, as the director uh, of FAUBAI, I would like to discuss these topics. And uh, this uh, association encompasses many higher education institutions. And we will have our annual conference, actually. And you are all invited. As Maria Leonor mentioned, I would like to just discuss this five minutes, just to discuss this initiative. Uh, IMILAC is the name of the initiative. Latin American Initiative for Internationalization of Higher Education. And it's very interesting to understand that this initiative was created during the pandemic and as a result of it. It was the uh, consequence or the result of many colleagues in the region who started to engage in discussions on the need to create uh, synergy, to create synergies, as well as to focus on concrete specific actions. And this is one of the distinctive features of this initiative. In April of last year, one year ago, actually, the uh, first conversations were held, the first contacts took place in May, where we presented for the first time this initiative during an event. This was launched in August in uh, Colombia, actually. And the initiative uh, was able to integrate six countries and six networks and associations. Argentina, represented by the 
uh, ILU network. Yes, uh, the FUFAOBAI in Brazil, uh, the Association from Chile, RCI in Colombia, and the World Network for Internationalization in Mexico, and another one in Peru. These associations worked on the internationalization of higher education in their respective countries. This was the initial uh, point of contact, and Uruguay was present as well at the webinar. There were different networks integrating the initiative, and uh, we expect to include more in the future. These networks and associations together for this initiative integrate a group as well of almost 600 institutions of higher education in the region. And this is not a network of uh, just a network of associations. There are other projects, and this is an initiative for a concrete proposal of actions. And the idea is for the members of this initiative to share the current challenges and common challenges within a a regional perspective, but also with a global approach. So I believe that uh, um, to align very closely with the goals of Obreal, especially in terms of the South-South-North cooperation. The idea is to bring forward action proposals that will allow the internationalization as the main axis uh, for the uh, processes of education, social action, and so that institutions can become part of and include a higher number of people. The first goal is to acknowledge uh, the importance of international cooperation and the need to have more effectiveness as well as innovation in order to think in an innovative manner, in a different manner, and to work on specific proposals of actions, as well as articulating synergies and the search for these uh, synergies, how to look for them, and how we can actually develop these joint initiatives by promoting the culture of internationalization with a cross-cutting approach within the different areas of internationalization that are possible within higher education. I would like to uh, also mention that it's important to focus on practical activities and also sharing experiences because each country and each network has its own responsibility in the coordination of the different projects. The projects have to do with the following topics, financing, international research, sharing good practices, sharing best practices as well, and also all of the projects that are related with the control and the promotion of internationalization and the regionalization that we are discussing today. This is an exchange program at a regional level, and it is fully virtual, which is being launched. And the group of institutions that are part of the network and of the initiative includes a project which falls under the responsibility of FAUBAI to implement collaborative learning online based on the ex experience that began four years ago. This, of course, happened before the context of digitalization and virtual settings. This is a Brazilian program for exchange. Brazilian virtual exchange is the name. So last year we held four meetings and we also worked on a plan for actions, action planning, and also paying close attention to uh, the different uh, scenarios. In April at the FAUBAI conference, they will be participating as well. And to conclude, the common challenges are to virtualize 
and of course the uh, consequences this has for institutional mobility and it is now po impossible to do it in person so the idea is to focus on uh, lessening uh, and working towards less inequality less xenophobia less racism this is the main focus of this initiative which focuses on cooperation internationalization with an inclusive approach as a common challenge the initiative will be uh, part of the FAUBAI virtual conference and you of course more than welcome to join it starts on april 20 and it will take place tuesdays and thursdays so april 20 april 22 then april 27 april 29 and then may 4th and may 6th the initiative will feature the participation during the first day on April 20, uh, participation of many experts. This is at 6 p.m. Brazil time. The main topic will be expanding our minds. I think there is a major space to continue reflecting upon the challenges that exist for Obreal Global in Focus and for the world of education. In Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your intervention. Jose, you have the floor now to promote internationalization and what initiatives. I would like to just discuss two or three aspects where uh, I think I can uh, discuss the needs. I think the flexibilization of internationalization has to do with rethinking about what internationalization means. And I would like to, in this sense, call, it, call attention to an initiative uh, uh, in the School of Veterinary Sciences where eight universities participate in an initiative from eight different countries. And during the second semester, we were able to mobilize almost 100 students, mobilize uh, in-house in a way, I instead of virtual exchange, I'd like to call it in-house mobilization, where the number of students is almost five times higher than the number that we could normally mobilize. And this has to do with rethinking from the beginning what we offer and how we offer and how we approach mobility. When you think about mobility and traditional exchange, you offer a certain number of uh, students that can access their qualification, their uh, level of progress, uh, time constraints and the possibilities of maybe paying for most of that exchange. And also having to find at the destination uh, a semester that will fulfill their expectations and upon returning, they will have to uh, make sure that they are recognized, that these credits are recognized. In the past, very few people were able to meet these requirements. And this has brought the possibility of expanding this. So it's a different approach now to internationalization. On the side of the institutions, it's not so important how many can access per semester and uh, when it's virtual, the number has increased of candidates and the requirements have changed as well. The requirements are no longer the same and they can before if you worked, you could never go to some kind of exchange in person and they faced uh, difficulties, but they were not selected sometimes or maybe they hadn't moved forward uh, sufficiently in their uh, program and therefore were not selected. So doing a semester abroad was very difficult for them. Now they can choose that they could maybe not abandon their semester if they were in the first year, they could take class from the first year. So the spectrum was broader and the requirements were less. So that's why we expanded the offering and we changed the way in which you could access to that. Everyone found this as a real possibility that they could include in their academic project. So in that sense, what we have to think is this kind of logic where we can expand the profiles to access these possibilities. On the other hand, these possibilities 
should not replace face-to-face -face exchange because of course uh, many times the main uh, contribution of that in-person exchange is not academic but it's social cultural and bonds that are uh, created and which students can leverage later on in their lives for their professional project. So I think that what we need to focus on is the challenge of this coexistence. So an in-house mobility that continues to be accessible for students at a university level, focusing on those maybe who do not have these opportunities at the same time offering the, the same possibilities that we had before to actually mobilize and stay at the universities physically. I think that we need to create a system of mobility that will allow us to have that, that exchange because the bond between professors and between the among the faculty has also become more fluent because those who didn't receive students because they were in disciplines that were in dif difficult to make compatible are now receiving foreign students and that has also opened them uh, to a new world uh, of education and it has also triggered academic exchange of a different net nature and I think that this has been enhanced by this flexibility. I agree with Monica, it is the curricula that need to adapt now to that uh, uh, promotion of compatibility and the promotion of mobility and which should give way to students uh, having a track record that maybe has one subject from Brazil, one subject from Colombia, one in Argentina, the rest in Uruguay. And therefore this has to be more commonplace. We shouldn't be surprised before the need to quickly validate those uh, those credits and not become an obstacle in this uh, path forward for these students. I think these are the challenges today. And I think we were able to quickly achieve uh, this higher number of students interested in this in-house mobility. And we are thinking of projecting this to uh, broader networks and we have to rethink from scratch how we think mobility in our region. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Rene, for your answers. Based on the experience of cooperation with Mexico, and based on the online collaboration process, what is the real impact of digitalization on the processes of university internationalization from a perspective of South-South-North cooperation? Cleona and Armida, go ahead. Thank you very much. I think that the use of uh, this uh, COIL modality or the virtual international collaboration as it is called uh, at the Veracruzana has had a very positive impact uh, in the case of Ireland, especially for students who are interested and choose to do Latin American studies or Spanish. Um, and it's very enriching for them. But also the possibility of working with other disciplines, for example, well, was a professor in Ireland who used to teach a class on human rights in Latin America. And she had a coil with a psychology professor at Veracruzana University. And this had a major impact, more than expected actually, because uh, they were able to adapt their uh, curricula, not just enriching them by this multicultural approach, but also through this way of working with other disciplines. What is important to point out is the fact that there has been a major step forward in Latin America in this sense, even more so than in Europe, to really quickly, as Jose mentioned, to quickly multiply opportunities for in-house mobility and have interactions between students and faculty from different countries through this virtual approach. I think that Cork 
has deeply benefited from the training offered by Veracruzana in this sense. And I believe that in Europe, uh, it is, they are inspiring thanks to UNESCO and thanks to LATAM COIL in their work with Veracruzana and the University of Monterrey, they have taken the right path forward. Another modality that has emerged within the Veracruzana are short research uh, opportunities online. And there is a wide range of options where students from the entire world can choose to join this uh, short research project. And I think this really opens up many, many different possibilities and they've had the chance in this way to work in other countries in research. And as Julio said, um, it is very important to raise awareness. This is of course very important for the future. Thank you very much. Armida, I don't know if you wish to add anything. Maybe what I would like to add is that a few moments ago, someone mentioned the fact that certain professors or faculty had uh, doubts on the neo-colonialism that could uh, occur or that these initiatives could colonize knowledge. In Europe, we've seen completely the opposite. This is an opportunity to decolonize the curriculum because since it's usually so Eurocentric and we only notice students when they come here, yes, and they're from Asia and they notice this immediately. So I think this has brought about the opportunity to do some sort of benchmarking and to know everything that needs to be changed so that it is no longer so Eurocentric. So I think this allows to see a different facet. And I think that through internationalization, things are seen in a completely different way, not just reading in one language, but also several uh, contexts and uh, reflecting other cultures, etc. And also the topics themselves. And this is an opportunity for the opposite. Thank you, Armida. You and Cleona have helped us to reflect upon many things. And Cleona said that this is a model for you, but you are also talking about this other dimension that is so important. Uh, at the beginning, Monica, que desde uh, su rol como impulsora de la reforma de referencia en Argentina, ¿qué so piensa del like fenómeno de la digitalización como una herramienta que podrá favorecer los procesos de flexibilización de digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio adelante? ¿Cómo piensa del fenómeno de la digitalización de los planes de estudio uh, uh, arise at a key moment in Latin American institutions. It's uh, the time to review curricula. And this creates a lot of challenges for institutions. So I think that some conditions are necessary in order to make the most of this uh, and in order to achieve this synergy of internationalization, digitalization, and curricular flexibilization. I think that among the conditions that are necessary, one has to be with institutional leadership. We need to identify the leaders in order to cover these three levels in a consistent way. Not only those who are in charge of internationalization or those who are in cultural management or those who work in digitalizations are the only ones that will be participating in this 
We need to have a, a unit that covers, that integrates the three dimensions in order to understand and to think the problem as a whole. And we have a second condition that has to do with the structure of the curriculum. In Argentina, we have, a few years ago, an experience. We have some units that were similar to those of Europe. In order to think uh, education uh, as a the institutions or the disciplines. We need to also understand or to identify uh, the courses, the disciplines, and we need to have an inter-institutional inter agreement for determining the curriculum. And I listened to the previous webinar, and Maria Kelo was talking about micro credentials, and they were including in the Bologna agenda these micro credentials that are very good for people, but they are not uh, well received by the academic sector. So when we try to integrate flexibility, digitalization, and internationalization, we need to think about the demands of society in terms of digitalization and internationalization. And we need also to uh, get these two dimensions closer. For example, we have this academic view then we have these, the demands of the people and we had the demands of the labor market and they should not be opposite uh, things. This is a challenge. I invite you all to uh, pay a look to the European websites. Um, for example, they have reached a consensus on the number of credits accorded across the whole region. But in our region, we need to have those agreements in order to be able to recognize the education structures in each country. And this is necessary in order to uh, and the digitalization part because we can use these micro credentials for our curriculum. And I think that the experiences that I already mentioned uh, have that goal, and we need to integrate these three dimensions. And we also need to take into consideration mobility. And I think that incorporating the uh, virtual uh, setting. Help us improve our curricula, but we are lacking the articulation or the, uh, the way to connect the curricula of the different universities across the region in order to incorporate everything that is of quality. And Maria Kilo was also saying that these micro-credentials cannot be submitted to external QA procedures. So those micro-credentials should be dealt by the universities and their internal units of quality assessment. And therefore, trust is key in order to establish these mechanisms of recognition that incorporate the digital, the international, and the flexibility. Thank you, Monica. I now would like to give the floor, and now we are trying to identify the path of education. I would like now to give the floor to Jose. Monica was talking about this, and we would like to incorporate the South-South North cooperation in this perspective. What do you think? I think that we need to make the most of the experiences 
that we are having. Trabajos y aterrizarlas we en could en en create en carreras, different proposals a, a and we could adapt no them to the different, different institutions, institutions and universities. Each discipline has its own characteristics and its own practical Let's not forget that the biggest challenge that we have still is the health discipline. But a commonplace is that we can enrich our curriculum, including professors from different countries. This is easier now, and even though we have on-site courses, we can include different professors or lecturers, something that seems so complex in the past because you require a video conference system that was very expensive. Now we have that. And we can enrich our curricula by having guest professors, for example. Para no we have other experience de, de in order to uh, make the most of the virtual setting. We offer new disciplines by incorporating professors and no students from different countries. Con la de una carrera, de una this is existe. not the same, this is not the same as the virtualization of a este, discipline that Marta, is already there. Hemos and in our network, Entonces, Marga, viene we para are la otra uh, making this proposal. Another option por parte de los is También the exchange of best practices between professors no sé, so anatomía, that the professor ejemplo, from a discipline, anatomy, for example, example that was able to teach uh, in the anatomía, virtual bueno, setting can exchange anatomía, his or her experiences with other colleagues. Que uh, que uh, you have filmado, now bueno, virtual analogy, uh, anatomy classes and now we would like to get uh, to connect all those professors uh, so they can exchange the ideas um, because we are seeing a new way of teaching and a new way of learning. So all of a sudden our students also learn a new way of learning. So we, need, uh, we are trying to promote best practices in teaching and we need to make the most of those experiences and to socialize them. And another thing that I think we need to prove is to have assessment experiences. In our university, Universidad de la República, we are conducting studies, studies uh, because what we are seeing is that the performance of students was the same or even better than in the past. So we want these new tools to have a democratizing effect and that they are not excluding students from the university. If we have a new offering that makes the curriculum flexible, and that also allows access to all our students, a, a, we need to make this a reality. So we need to understand uh, the experiences of the students, how they build their capacities, so how we need to understand that each student follows their own path. But at the same time, we need to understand that some changes are here to stay, and therefore we need to have the figures how many students are able to pass a course that is international or that has been provided by a foreign institution or with a certain modality. We need to promote integration and we need to overcome those restrictions in order to work together with students and with professors so that within the training goals of our students we give them the possibility of including in a website or a virtual experience in the region or outside the region. We need to give them that opportunity and that is something that we need to develop in 2021. Thank you, Jose. And Monica talked about curricular flexibilization and then Jose is Pero talking ahora, about how Mariano we can Honor, apply this at the regional level. 
Maria yeah, Leonor. Esa cooperación científica, Do you think that these prophecies will help us have a better scientific cooperation eh, with the countries in Africa or with the region in, or with other eh, regions in general? Eu acho que eu concordo com muitas das coisas que foi colocada pela Mônica. Um, first, I agree with what Monica was saying uh, that we have been in past. I also agree with what was said before regarding these synergies. I think that this is a fundamental aspect. Action of digitalization. Como processo estruturante no ensino superior, e qual o papel que você tem na internacionalização? Digitalização então, eu acho que é um processo estrutural, uma das perguntas que foram feitas na internacionalização. Eu acho que precisa, sim, ser uma uh, estratégia like institucional, uh, porque não será o setor de relações internacionais que será capaz de liderar essa chave, que terá todas as forças para é, mover so uma mudança tão fundamental e importante para a educação de uma forma geral. Porque envolve questões change. pedagógicas, é, estruturantes, que necessita sim de ter de ser um movimento institucional. We need to include different pedagogical elements on cultural Nos elements. Eu acho que a digitalização that. traz uma with regard é, to what was mentioned é, regarding de possibilidades uh, enormes. Né, other com, countries, nós I think that we have a great potential. É, we, don't know, we don't know much of the knowledge structures in Africa and other regions. We have some projects that have been conducted for a very uh, uh, long time ago. Com a África em geral, não somente com a África, isso ampliou and com o Ministério de Relações been Exteriores. With Africa in general, e we have been working together with the foreign ministry. Para o Brasil, para a realização de cursos. And we are trying to promote the mobility of students from Africa to Brazil. É um, é um projeto pioneiro. In order to promote intermission, internationalization, they come é, here for six e que months. Hoje eu acho que ele tem um potencial gigantesco de crescimento a partir da virtualidade. Evidentemente que a gente I think that this project has a lot of potential. Nos melhor os sistemas educacionais nesses países. But for improving this, we need to know the systems of other countries. A gente se conhece um pouco mais do que Brasil, and Angola, Brasil, Moçambique, Brasil, Cabo Verde, Brasil, Guiné, Brasil, I Macau, inclusive. That é, por exemplo, we have é onde a gente to learn more about what is happening in Brazil and not in Portugal. De avaliação. Internacionalizar and o currículo é também chegar nesses lugares. We also need to include the e assessment or evaluation in we need to establish a communication channel between universities. We speak the same language in Portugal and in Brazil, but we have different accents. And this intercultural aspect is fundamental. We have different accents, but we have the same language, so we need to identify and to promote those common points. That would be fundamental to uh, make higher education international. America do Norte, Canada, Europa. Já está constituída essa relação. I think that we need not to identify or to work so much to establish our connections with North America and Europe because those links are already there. We need to promote our relationships with Africa and with the Caribbean. I think that that is one of the strategies we have as an institution. We have different universities with different levels of internationalization and we have different exchange programs 
a aproximação com a África, né? por essa one possibilidade, of the of ela é Brasília muito concreta, e que por aí, esse é um dos caminhos que a gente tem, inclusive, para repensar o currículo, não só lá, mas principalmente aqui. Uh, Maria Leonor, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Eh, muy bien. Estudar exchanges en todas las modalidades de internacionalización. Ya, Kiona y Armina Thank nos habían dado Maria una Leonor, de la interpretación de todo esto que estamos haciendo uh, en Sudamérica de and, uh, con sus experiencias en la Universidad Nacional de Irlanda. Kurt, y la de nuestros colegas también han hablado de sus experiencias en México y en Irlanda. Ahora tratemos de, de ver ese enfoque so de ustedes de cómo like, esta digitalización like de internacionalización está modificándose en Europa. ¿Cuáles son esas tendencias que están en Europa? ¿Qué nos podría contar? En Europa? We would like no sé si Cleona quiere adelantar o Armida. No sé si Cleona quiere hablar primero o Armida. A ver, eh, empiezo. I'd por favor, like por to favor, start. Por favor. Sí, eh, pues, eh, la, la parte que me gustaría a mí enfatizar es que I would like to make emphasis de la, on the de fact that up to now we have talked a lot about digitalization from the pero desktop, algo que estamos viendo que también estamos usando en Europa es eh, la posibilidad que nos ofrece la digitalización de acercarnos más a la realidad por medio de las tabletas y los celulares. Eh, estamos promoting digitalization ejemplo, through eh, smartphones and tablets. Cork fue cuando fue la ciudad, uh, eh, cuando fue Cork. el festival de Learning Cities de la In ciudad Cork, de Cork, tuvimos the festival of la oportunidad cities. de que nuestros estudiantes escribieran, um, por así decir, tours de la ciudad. Students and que they uploaded this to smartphones and tablets so that international students could visit the city and have access to information uh, through these devices. This was a good way to connect them. This was thanks to digitalization and was not related to the pandemic. This was before the pandemic. And we saw that there was a great potential. For example, in the Wizard Park, uh, opposite to the university, so you have the sculptures there and those tours talk about who built those uh, sculptures and we included all those types of activities that could be of interest for students. Another thing that we incorporated are ebooks. We do not tell students to replace our teaching with a book, but we include a book in our model and we give students credits Entonces, if aspecto, they read the book and that also helps or contributes ser, to flexibilization and also I would like to give an example regarding micro-credentials and eh, this also has been thank you to digitalization Cleona and I prepared a training course for continuous development of academic personnel in the area of digitalization and higher education it is a course that includes three or four units, one of them is internationalization of curriculum, and that is one of the most important ones. But after the course, the academic personnel does not receive a physical diploma, but a digital badge, badge. that is what they receive. And this is a way of recognizing their efforts, and it's a valid Para de, de, they can de, de also 
académico uh, cuenta use them to review digamos, academic performance they Entonces, uh, represent esta, points estas micro for those who take the course como so we have these micro credentials eh, for a very specific tiempo, training largo, course no tan, no tan uh, especially these courses do not have de, embargo, such a broad curriculum si but they have been welcome de and they have these este uh, courses have y helped ha academic personnel to improve their capacities este, este in this area and they've been very la, successful. La, this digital badge uh, has been claro, a model pues to create similar badges in other areas. And this uh, also could be implemented with the students Sino que también so ser that we have different types of curricula. We could have digital curricula. They could be homologated, ejemplo, at least within Europe, it could be exchangeable. And what they en do in Ireland could be used in other countries of Europe thanks to those micro credentials. Uh, we are using those badges for the academic personnel, but we want to implement this for students. So Amiga, I think those gracias. are the three no sé, trends that we Fiona, have. ¿tú quisieras hacer algún énfasis en esta parte? Este, pues solo que Fiona, si would you like to say something de about de it? Mencionó, yes, micro-credentials, as Monica, Monica mentioned, and uh, Maria as well, in the si previous webinar, it is true that this is a possibility for the future within the European Union. And I think that this benefit that Europe has with the famous STS, uh, I think in a way, it has to do with thinking and recreating ways to provide these European credits or these STS and dreaming about a collaboration with Latin America, I think there is a lot on uh, pues uh, más uh, unexplored Latina terrain there to bring en, Latin America Europa, uh, into no? the curriculums of Europe digitally. I think that we are uh, facing many, many opportunities and that no? need to be channeled pues, and ejemplo, fully leveraged. I think que, that que when thinking about short-term uh, projects, there is a master's in Ireland of researchers working with the Veracruzana on issues such as local food uh, security and safety and uh, also culture and parts uh, recovery. So I think that this opens up these projects, projects, for example, focus on resilience and uh, conservation. And this maybe was impossible to conceive uh, not too long ago. So I think this is a more than welcome idea. And uh, those of us who work on internationalization, I think we can think and convince and raise awareness and also train, of course, our communities so that um, we can focus on finding new ways. Muchas gracias, Fiona y Armida. Bueno, voy a hacer una cosa de reto para nuestros panelistas. Tenemos muy poco tiempo, pero viene la pregunta de cierre, que es una de las preguntas más interesantes, considero yo. Closing question, I think it's one of the most interesting ones. Everything has been fully interesting, but this is what I like the best. Estamos docentes y trabajamos para los docentes. All of us are faculty, and uh, I would like to ask you, Monica, first, what do you think the challenges are for the role of professors? Uh, what are the main challenges for faculty? Uh, I would like you to respond to this as quickly as possible, just so that we can stay within our time frame. Well, I kept thinking about this question and about what Armida had said about the fear that had emerged in professors, the fear of being replaced by machines or by virtual education. This is very important to understand. A lot of work needs to be done with the faculty to bring together the two worlds and uh, really appreciate the role, the important role of professors in 
in digital education. I think that uh, the origin of this is to look at these things from different worlds. Sometimes internationalization and digitalization is introduced into institutions at managerial levels, yes, in the areas, and not many uh, faculty members are involved. And when there came a time when you had to coexist with virtuality, some professors react. And of course, this can be reverted if, for example, we can train further, but also I would include, since we're talking about bringing together the international aspect with digitalization, why not thinking about virtual mobilization of professors, of faculty, so that they can have experiences with micro-credentials, with uh, training of trainers, and also to include them in this new scenario and invite them to create new curriculum uh, with colleagues from other countries countries, so maybe encourage them to present education programs. Many of the professors that work in their areas and when they do research, they are in touch with colleagues from other parts of the world. So maybe based on those existing links, we could leverage them to further develop this idea of bringing digital uh, uh, focuses closer to teaching. And I think this also includes a flexibilization of the work in the classroom, yes, how to solve problems, how to think of students as the center of the pedagogical act, and also how to improve work methodologies, the evolution of learning, which is sometimes very dissociated from what is actually being taught. So I think it's a very good moment to fully leverage all of these processes, but also thinking that the teacher, the, the professor, has to collaborate in the process and not a person that is to be told what they need to do, yes, because that will create a fear that they will be displaced and replaced. So I think that a lot needs to be done based on the experiences that were mentioned, and these are extremely interesting. I think in the last few minutes of this uh, meeting, we discussed a very important topic, and it's the fact that every region has a lot to contribute in terms of the uh, creation of uh, the, the world's wisdom. I think knowledge from Latin America can be used in Europe and vice versa. So how do we involve faculty as an active participant and not just as a recipient uh, or someone who, is, who needs to be told what to do? All of this can uh, be discussed. And of course, this is a discussion that involves technology and teaching. And for many, this has been a novelty. For others, not so much. But I think it is here to stay. And we need to fully leverage it in order to combine uh, these different spaces, online and virtual, always thinking about flexible, democratizing ways Monica, to study. Muchísimas gracias. Muy Thank you very much, muy Monica. Por favor, this has le been a very Elizabeth. interesting Estamos illustration. I will ask Elizabeth Colucci to let us know. I know there are many, many questions. How could they be answered? I know that this is a session that has been recorded and will probably remain for posterity. Many of the questions that cannot be answered here will probably have a development in the recording. So, I have an idea. I have an idea. Since, uh, before Elizabeth uh, uh, takes the floor, I would like to say something. Todos estamos aprendiendo I think that we are all learning. De estos we are all learning de also how to do these webinars. Este of all the webinars that I've participated in, uh, this has had very good interventions and very good questions, which are real ejemplo, triggers me, me for further discussion. Email, and they've even sent me questions realidad. by email Yo during the seminar. So I think that we should learn from this as Obreal Global and with the support of all the panelists, I think that we should make a decision considering 
that we are all here and we all agree on the content, on the basic content, the fact that digitalization and internationalization are here to stay and that we have to deal with this. Let's think about maybe in one month and a half, approximately, we have all all the emails of the participants. So we will have a new session where we can move forward in the what of this issue. And before the session, we will send everyone the questions that were asked. And in this new session, we will be able to answer the questions after giving them some thoughts and moving forward with this. Because we run the risk of maybe ending the session now and forgetting about them and these Tenemos questions are not easy to answer. Hecho. We need to y digest si everything that has been done. And I think that if the chairs of the Oscar South American y chapter agree, we will take off the commitment of finishing now, which is the established time. But we promise you that if Obreal Global and Oscar agree from the South American chapter, that we, have, we should all get together again with a specialized mail to continue today's discussion. I think that it would be very sad to just use five minutes to answer all of these questions interesting questions and not pay sufficient attention. I'm sorry for this improvisation, but it's what I say uh, always. Since I haven't spoken much at the beginning for my opening words, I have the freedom of speaking a little longer at the end. It's an idea, so Elizabeth can, and Oscar can decide what to do. Absolutely, Ramon, I think that you've channeled our anxiety because I didn't know how to manage this. And these questions are so interesting. Para todo lo que nuestros panelistas han planteado. Entonces, estando de acuerdo contigo, si. And so I think that in agreement with what you said, and if everyone agradecerles a María Leonor, agrees, a Cleona, I would like Armida, to just thank María Leonor, luego, Armida, a, a, Cleona, a José, y and luego, of course, René, José and René, who also joined us. They were all excellent panelists. Mirada, thank you for your luego, visions. Thank you for your perspectives. And thank you, Obreal Global, for this uh, opportunity to look from the South American perspective, Julio, to look at the these innovative proposals, and of course, Julio, with this introduction that you gave, where you describe so many areas of work. Um, Elizabeth, we will give you the floor once again for you to have the possibility to officially close this webinar, and so that we can continue with the planned activities for the uh, uh, seminar. I think Elizabeth should close, for sure. I have interrupted her and moved with my manners, but now I will just step aside and let Elizabeth conclude. Okay, Ramon, thank you. And also, um, thank you as well for the suggestion, which has also alleviated me, not just Oscar, of summarizing what are indeed some very complex and very interesting questions. Um, some of those questions were somewhat answered along the way, uh, questions relating to the role of uh, universities in restructuring the management of their internationalization, questions related to overcoming obstacles related to the, professor, the professorship. Um, but I think you're right, this requires an entirely new session. And so uh, we promise to send the participants a follow up very shortly. Um, where we can explore in more depth uh, these questions. I think this was an excellent conclusion to Obreal Global in Focus. We haven't officially concluded yet because the, um, the Symbiosis International University Conference on, on internationalization is taking place next week. We encourage you to sign up for this event. There are some very rich and interesting sessions. It will be an opportunity to also explore internationalization more through the Indian perspective. Obreal Global is supporting this event. You can uh, find more information about it on the Obreal Global in Focus website. But today's activity was indeed the last separate webinar that we're offering under the Obreal Glo Global in Focus platform. This was the first edition of Obreal 
Real Global in Focus. Uh, there will be further additions. This has been a learning experience for us at Obriel Global, for our partners, for our newly established chapters. And I think it's very promising. I would just like to end by saying that I, I thank very much the audience. We've been tracking the participation across the different events. And we've seen that we have a few champions, a few, <laughs> a few individuals that have repeatedly participated in these events from very diverse parts of the world. And we really appreciate that. And we hope that you will continue to participate in the activities of the association. Um, I would just briefly mention colleagues from Georgia that have been very consistently uh, engaged in our platform, colleagues from South Africa, um, colleagues, of course, from Central America, the Caribbean and, and South America. Um, today, we also had a, a comment in the chat from Mozambique. So I think this shows that we're reaching a truly global audience um, and that our efforts to, um, to contract interpretation for these activities are not in vain. Um, it is really important for us to have a global dialogue um, and, and, and um, if we need interpretation to do that, we will continue to make sure that it's possible. So nothing more from my side. Thank you for a very rich, uh, very rich discussion and dialogue. We will process it, we will digest it, and we will come back to everybody, the participants and the panelists soon for another round. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a lovely afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and we look forward to seeing you soon.